These are the shocking times when referees ruin the NHL. While ruining might sound extreme for a missed call in regular season overtime, the ice, on top of it. every oversight or mistake tarnishes the game's integrity, especially in the last of our list. Frankie Corrado is his next. Up first, we've got the most controversial playoff goal that was allowed in NHL history. It was the Stanley Cup Finals, and this goal granted the Stars an overtime win to secure the championship. During that period, players were prohibited from scoring with a foot in the crease, which is precisely what Hull did. The controversial goal took place in triple overtime during Game 6, and it's plausible that the officials may have been a bit disoriented after a prolonged night at the job. Nevertheless, it proved pivotal in securing Dallas its sole Stanley Cup in franchise history. Since then, Sabres fans have endured a challenging two decades with the team struggling to return to the final and frequently facing playoff absences. The second in our list is also equally controversial to say the least. We've got the Marcus Foligno phenomenon going on. It's the fourth game of the NHL and there are 52 seconds left on the clock. Dallas is in the lead, 2-1 with less than 5 minutes remaining in the third period. Foligno attempts to hit Mason Marchment but he jumps to avoid the hit, accidentally clipping Foligno in the face with a stick. Foligno falls to the ice, prompting the referees to take a few minutes to assess the situation. Guess what? Foligno receives a tripping penalty while Marchman faces no consequences for the incident. This decision proves pivotal as the Stars score the winning goal during the resulting power play. Foligno consequently expresses frustration, suggesting that this moment might have been a turning point in the series. At number 3 is another notable moment that often finds its way onto hockey blooper reels involving the Winnipeg Jets and the Chicago Blackhawks. In a tight game, both teams headed into overtime where a goaltender Ed Belfour attempted to clear the puck. However, a Winnipeg Jet player intercepted it, proceeding to glove it into the net. What makes this incident memorable is the perplexing decision by the referees to award the Jets a goal and declare them the victors. Even today, the play remains both controversial and comical. At number 4, we have the Blackhawks and Red Wings heat up. In a moment at that, in the grand scheme of things, stood inconsequential, a call had the potential to alter the outcome of the Stanley Cup for the Chicago Blackhawks. Nicholas Jalmerson seemingly secured a game-winning goal only for a whistle away from the play to nullify the score. The unusual aspect here is that a scrum between two blurs, Kyle Quincy and Brandon Sad, unrelated to the ongoing events down the ice, led referee Stephen Walcombe to assess matching minors. While it is tempting to look back on this incident with a laugh, it raises the question of what could have transpired if the Red Wings had scored in overtime. Number 5 involves another huge blunder made by the ref when counting a goal by John Leclerc as the puck went through the side of the net. This controversial goal occurred during the 2000 playoffs, leaving the Buffalo Sabres feeling cheated. Despite the puck clearly going through the side of the net, the goal was still counted. The Philadelphia Flyers, benefiting from this decision, went on to win the series. However, it raises intriguing questions about the series' outcome had this particular goal not been counted. Describing a moment as wild as such an incident is challenging, much like the next one that involved the Nashville Predators. The Predators experienced the consequences of an untimely whistle that ultimately cost them the first goal of the game. In Game 6 of the Stanley Cup Final, center Carlton Sissons tapped in a rebound after a shot slipped through Pittsburgh Penguins goalie Matt Murray early in the second period. However, the referees promptly called off the goal and convened for a discussion. The faint whistle, partially drowned out by crowd noise, had blown before the puck crossed the goal line. Referee Kevin Pollock had lost sight of the puck, despite it being loose the entire team. Unfortunately, due to the whistle having declared the play dead, it was not subject to review. Pretty weird, isn't it? Same as the controversial victory secured by the Calgary Flames over Vancouver Canucks. In the midst of the typical chaos in front of the net before a goal, the referees usually gather to ensure fair play. However, in this playoff game, there was a contentious moment involving Joel Otto. It appeared that he kicked the puck into the net while spinning towards the goal. The goal in question wasn't a clear or clean one, raising questions about its validity. The Flames went on to win the Stanley Cup, but the implications of this particular goal remain uncertain. 
What if this goal had not been counted? Talking about goals, who can forget the 2004 Stanley Cup final between the Tampa Bay Lightning and the Calgary Flames? The Flames had a golden opportunity to secure the Stanley Cup, but a non-goal call deprived them of this chance, ultimately leading to the Lightning winning the Cup in seven games. Martin and Gallinus appeared to score a goal, but instead of initiating a review, the referees opted to let the play continue. The controversy lies not in the question of whether the puck was in the net, but rather in the NHL's decision not to review a potentially game-changing play in a Stanley Cup elimination game. At number 9, we have the Wayne Gretzky highly controversial goal, again all thanks to the refs. It was the match that eliminated Maple Leafs due to this goal, after Gretzky was observed high-sticking Doe Gilmore, the referees convened for a discussion. Despite Gilmore bleeding from the incident, the decision was made not to call a penalty on Gretzky, allowing him to stay on the ice. Had a penalty been assessed, Gretzky wouldn't have had the opportunity to score, potentially altering the outcome and giving the Maple Leafs a chance to advance to the Stanley Cup Final. At number 10, we have Steve Bernier's boarding penalty. It was the Stanley Cup Finals of 2012, and after hitting Rob Scuderi into the boards, Steve Bernier was ejected, giving the Kings a crucial 5-minute power play opportunity. They capitalized with three power play goals, ultimately clinching the Stanley Cup. The hit sparked significant controversy, especially considering a similar play moments earlier involving Jared Stroll and Stephen Gionta. At number 11, we have a wrong call by the ref being challenged by the Sharks coach David Quinn, and guess what? He gets slapped with a hefty $25,000 fine for berating the ref during a game against the Capitals. Critics rightfully argued after the game that the NHL's officiating won't improve unless there is accountability. The sentiment is that as long as team personnel face restrictions in criticizing officials while referees escape consequences for blatant errors, as was observed in this case. At number 12, we have playoff number one of the Stanley Cup 2023. There was a controversial incident in Game 1 involving a slash to Corey Perry by Kent. While it might have been a penalty in the regular season, it wasn't to be in this case and it led to a Tampa goal impacting the outcome of the game. Number 13 would see the tables turn on Corey Perry, where he himself can be seen slashing the goalies to stick this NHL season. And guess what happened? The aggressive move went unnoticed by officials, leaving fans in disbelief. The incident was seen during a recent NHL game between the Anaheim Ducks and Edmonton Oilers. The Ducks shared a clip of the incident on social media, sparking reactions and debates among fans about the consistency of refereeing in the league. The inconsistency of refereeing continues as we saw the game too between the Canes and Islanders last year. The controversy was triggered during overtime. The Kings scored to make it 4-3, but a slash by Martin Nuke on Mayfield sparked debate. Despite the referee being in close proximity, the slash wasn't penalized, highlighting inconsistencies in officiating, even in crucial moments. And at number 15 is yet another glaring error made by the refs in the Western Conference first-round series between the Vegas Golden Knights and San Jose Sharks. The Sharks were trailing three goals to nil halfway through the third period when chaos occurred. Aiken cross-checked Sharks capital Joe Pavelski after a face-off, causing Pavelski to trip over another Vegas player and lose consciousness. Initially, no penalty was signaled, but after officials conferred, Aiken received a controversial five-minute major and a game misconduct. The ensuing power play saw San Jose score four goals, leading to their victory in overtime. Then there was this play at the end of the second period between Minnesota Wild and Dallas, which was completely absurd. Marcus Foligno executed a clean check on Hanny Hakanpa, finishing it beautifully. However, the play was called for interference even though Hakanpa had possession of the puck just before. This incident highlights the perceived softness of referees towards the NHL playoffs lately. While not advocating for constant hits, solid plays like this contribute positively to the game. The decision to label it interference is simply laughable, considering it was a robust and fair hit. For number 17, take a look at the call in Kevin Fiala for tripping Leon Dreisaitl in the Edmonton vs LA series. Fiala got penalized, leaving fans genuinely upset, and it's hard to blame them. The hit seemed clean, knocking Dreisaitl down, but Fiala's stick made contact with Dreisaitl's skate after he was already falling. The outcome of the game might have been the same, irrespective of this incident, still, it's a huge if and but situation. At number 18, we have a biting moment gone unnoticed. 
It was during the 2011 Cup Series between the Boston Bruins and Vancouver Canucks. During the match, a serious confrontation ensued between Burroughs and Patrice Bergeron. As Bergeron tried to push Burroughs, the Canucks player bit down on Bergeron's index finger. Despite Bergeron pleading for a penalty, Burroughs inexplicably escaped disciplinary action. But what's even more crazy is this moment that had to make our list. During a Capitals vs Penguins game, Capitals forward Tom Wilson made a questionable play, seemingly attempting to harm Penguins defenseman Brian Demolin. Wilson, chasing Demolin open ice, made contact when Demolin stopped due to an impending hit from Alex Ovechkin. Though it happened quickly and may have been accidental, Demolin was left dazed and had to exit the game. The interesting thing was that all four officials gathered, discussed the hit, and then explained their decision not to penalize Wilson to both coaches. And at 20, we have the pivotal playoff game for in the 2013 NHL. It was the game between the Vancouver Canucks and San Jose Sharks. During the game, a controversial boarding call in Daniel Seddon granted the Sharks a crucial power play. The Sharks capitalized within seconds, sealing a four-game sweep and eliminating the Canucks. Rayplay suggested Seddon's hit was a regular hockey play. The call was highly controversial to say the least, and there you have it. A roller coaster ride through the top 20 most controversial official decisions that significantly impacted the NHL games. Comment below if you think we missed a crucial one, and your suggestion might get featured in the next part. For now, it's goodbye from us, peace out.